There's an area in South Dakota called Badlands. A part is open to tourists, another part is on Native American reservations. In old days, it was known to be a stronghold of Native Americans. Modern science claims the structures have naturally formed over 75 million years. If you come across a history topic that mentions the words millions of years, you should be suspicious. I'm proposing the Badlands of Dakota are the site of an ancient megacity that was destroyed by rock melting technology and bombing from the air. To prove my point, I'll be using mostly old photos of the Badlands when the structures were less eroded and this truth was easier to see. This place used to be called the Castle of a Thousand Rooms. But it's no longer so named today. Does this really look like naturally formed rock to you? Or rather a destroyed palace of many pillars? In old drawings, Badlands look much more like a city. Look at the background of this drawing. Where else does nature make towers like this? Where else does nature make balls? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The native name for these badlands is Mako Sika, which sounds suspiciously like make sick. It wouldn't be the first time Native Americans spoke English, but were misinterpreted as speaking their native language. Why are these badlands so bad? Why do they make sick? Because of the residue of chemical warfare. Another Native American term for the area was Mankazita Wapa, which scholars claim means smoking land river. Did the chemical fallout give it the appearance of smoking for some time? Here is a quote from nps.gov about the badlands. The earliest known description of the region, believed to be the White River Badlands, is that of James Clyman, a member of Jedediah Smith's 11-man party, who passed through the area in 1823. Clyman described it as, a tract of county where no vegetation of any kind existed, being worn into knobs and gullies, and extremely uneven. A loose grayish-colored soil, very soluble in water, ran as thick as it could move, of a pale whitish color, and was remarkably adhesive. There came on a misty rain while we were in this pile of ashes, badlands west of the south fork of the Cheyenne River, and it loaded down our horses' feet in great lumps. It looked a little remarkable that not a foot of level land could be found. The narrow ravines going in all manner of directions, and the cobble mounds of irregular taper from top to bottom, all of them at the precise same angle, with sharp tops. The whole of this region is moving to the Missouri River, as fast as rain and the thawing of snow can carry it. This is the earliest description of the Badlands we have, and it mentions piles of ashes, like in the aftermath of war. If this war indeed happened, as I say, then it must have been around this time. But Maximilian, Prince of Wide, returned to Fort Pierre in 1834, after making his historic journey up a Missouri with Charles Bodmer, William Laidlaw, the traitor of the fort, gave him a description of the Badlands. The German prince wrote. I much regretted that I could not remain long enough to visit the interesting tract of the Mavez's Terras, which is some days' journey from hence. Mr. Laidlow, who had been there in the winter, gave me a description of it. It is two days' journey, he said, southwest of Fort Pierre, and forms, in the level prairie, an accumulation of hills of most remarkable forms, looking like fortresses, churches, villages and ruins, and doubtless consisting of the same sandstone as the conformations near the stone walls. He further stated that the Big Horn abounds in that tract. Father de Smet visited the Badlands region in 1848. He described it as, the most extraordinary of any I have met in my journeys through the wilderness. Viewed at a distance, these lands exhibit the appearance of extensive villages and ancient castles, but under form so extraordinary and so capricious a style of architecture that we might consider them as appertaining to some new world or ages far remote early travelers to the area, see what I see. One of the party was a Frenchman, E. de Girardin, a soldier of fortune, employed as an artist on the expedition. His story of the trip was published in 1864 in a French travel magazine, La Tour du Monde. After climbing a hill about 100 meters, or about 330 feet high, he beheld the strangest and most incomprehensible view. 
at the horizon, at the end of an immense plain and tinted rose by the reflection of the setting sun, a city in ruins, appears to us, an immense city surrounded by walls and bulwarks, filled by a palace crowned with gigantic domes and monuments of the most fantastic and bizarre architecture. At intervals, on a soil white as snow, rise embattled chateaus of brick red, pyramids with their sharp pointed summits, topped with shapeless masses which seem to rock in the wind, a pillar of a hundred meters, rises in the midst of this chaos of ruins like a gigantic lighthouse. Notice here the rectangle front right, on top of which grass is growing. If we start digging here, what will we find? Or perhaps the many gold diggers of the 1800s have already looted the area. South Dakota experienced the usual gold rush in the mid-1800s, and mines were set up throughout the country. The 1800s also saw the rise of secret societies throughout North America. Many of these secret societies were connected to mining. I wonder, what was so secret about mining? This formation used to be called Castle of the Ancients. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.